So the next presentation is going to be focusing on high iron pin. This is going to be uh, presented by Justin. He has uh, rich experience also. He's working with um, uh, the Alliance. He's based in the Alliance of Biodiversity International in uh, Seattle. Uh, he's based in Nairobi. He has a rich experience in the areas of horticulture, crop protection, and agriculture innovation systems. And also he has really rich hands-on experience. Uh, thank you so much, Samson, uh, for the welcome and the kind words. My responsibility at the Compact is a technology transfer officer. And uh, I'm presenting this on behalf of my two colleagues, uh, Patricia uh, Onyango, uh, who is a communications person, and uh, Jose Kamanda, the compact leader. So the iron bean, um, as we popularly call them, they are actually, they have high iron content and high zinc uh, together. Um, so these bean varieties, which we are now scaling in eight countries in Africa, um, is basically an additional arsenal to what uh, uh, we have been doing as Alliance of Biodiversity and CIAT, formerly called it CIAT, International Center for Tropical Agriculture. And beans are a critical, are critical for food and nutrition security, uh, particularly for smaller farmers in Africa. And beans have evolved from being subsistence crops, as many of us probably know, to a commercial crop. And uh, that is happening quite a bit in a number of countries, but again, the Eastern and Southern Africa countries. And it's grown over more than 4 million hectares across Africa. Uh, in terms of per capita consumption of beans in Africa, Eastern Africa leads, and uh, we have about 30 kilos of beans uh, consumed every, every year per person. And uh, as we, all, we may all know that uh, beans have high uh, protein content, but they're also rich in fiber, in minerals and vitamins, and therefore really suitable for our health. Uh, but uh, there are also biofortified beans that have been developed recently that have been bred in partnership between SEAT or our Alliance of Biodiversity International and SEAT in collaboration with our uh, uh, national graduate research partners across the countries where uh, uh, ABC or SEAT has a presence. So the High Iron Bean Compact uh, has uh, five key objectives uh, in, 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 in for delivery for the period of implementation. One is to raise the productivity of uh, bush bean varieties from an average of 0 0.8 metric tons to 1.2. And then the climbing bean varieties from 1.5 metric tons to 2.5. Increase additional production of beans across the countries where we are operating for to at least 800,000 tons, metric tons in average. And we're targeting at reaching at least 2 million households across the eight countries uh, with access to seed, be able to adopt the technology and do other things in, across the value chain, including sales, consuming, processing, and, and, and other ecosystem of business activities across the value chain. And also create jobs, particularly for the young people and uh, increase uh, value addition, uh, which basically speaks more to women and, um, uh, and, and a number of other activities along the value chain that create jobs. We are present in eight countries, like I've already mentioned. Uh, we're operating in Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Zimbabwe, Burundi, Malawi. And uh, we are targeting 2 million uh, households uh, that would benefit this, with these iron bean uh, uh, technologies in the three years which are coming to an end this year, uh, uh, maybe a part of next year as well. In terms of the technologies we are pushing or we are scaling up, they are basically categorized into, into three. One is the bean variety that have high ionizing content. In total, across the eight countries, those bean varieties are 31. They are different ones for different countries, and uh, they have been released for commercialization. So these are not research; they are not technologies that are under research. The technologies that have been released and ready for for, for scaling up and commercialization, and uh, they have been released by the local national agricultural research systems. Uh, so local research organizations that operate in the very, the eight countries. Besides the bean varieties that have high iron and high zinc content, we're also promoting 
uh, good agricultural practices, uh, seeds themselves uh, may not deliver the intended potential of the product, of the seed. So the complementary technologies come in the package of good agricultural practices, and they cut across a number of areas, seed dressing for protection against uh, soil-borne diseases and pests, crop, uh, cropping systems, uh, herbicides for uh, uh, control of weeds, mechanization services, post-harvest handling services, and climate smart practices, uh, and knowing that these technologies are also climate smart technologies. In addition to those two uh, categories of technologies, seeds, uh, varieties, and, 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 and good agricultural practice, we also have scaling up of value added products. So beans uh, traditionally have been consumed as beans, but we have since gone to the next level of uh, uh, processing them into various products, pre-cooked beans. Uh, we also have uh, uh, composite flours mixed with other grains like maize and so on. And this has really been variable for purposes of uh, contributing to improve nutrition and uh, improve businesses and incomes across various sectors of our society. So uh, the target countries where we're operating kind of have, have mentioned that, uh, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, DRC, Rwanda, Burundi, Zimbabwe, and Malawi, or we work using Pan-African Bean Research Alliance Partnership, which has about 530 partners across Africa, that in, and we are present in 31 countries, actually. And we, we have three um, regional uh, networks that form the Pan-African Bean Research Alliance. So we have Ekabren, which is the eastern um, part of Africa, and then we have Wekabren, which is Western Africa Bean Research Network, and we have uh, Sabren, which is Southern Africa Bean Research Network. So under this arrangement, we operate to ensure that beans are moved from production all the way to market. So PABRA, Pan-African Bean Research Alliance, uh, implements or operationalizes its activities using a model we call the bean corridor. The bean corridor is basically a private sector driven uh, model that basically seeks to converge bean activities to a specific uh, identified market. So we identify an off taker, and then all other activities are upstream all the way to research flow in that kind of a direction. And, and this bean corridor is subdivided into kind of three sections. One is the production hub, where we basically have research and production uh, of, of research products and seed systems. And we have distribution hub, where we, we have the grain that has been produced and then aggregated and put together. Then we have the consumption hub, which is more like the market where we also have processing and buying of technology. And then we have cross-cutting activities that talk about policy, government-related activities, gender issues, ICT and nutrition, and then building resilience, basically capacity building to ensure that the corridor operates and make sure it delivers on the objective. Yeah, so PABRA or ABC PABRA is like the broker of all these players. Yeah, so it pulls all these players to deliver on scaling up of a high-end bid. So all, the, all that ABC does is basically catalyze partnerships, ensure that the partners are actually operational. So in that regard, we have national agriculture research institutes that talk about varieties, breeding, breeding, uh, you know, technologies that come from research. Then we have private sector players that uh, talk about input markets, availability of inputs, and then getting the grain out into the market. We have local governments that really, and, and government institutions that talk about policy issues. And that also facilitate uh, you know, access of technologies to extension services. Then we also have scaling partners that are either country investment programs or government organizations that support this through funding, through capacity building, and a number of other ways. And all of us together looking at getting to hit the targets that is the beneficiaries, primarily across all the eight countries. So far, uh, sorry, that is a that that screen may have very little, small font, but I'll just highlight one or two of our achievements so far. Now, as you may be aware, TART is um, is designed to leverage from other programs. So over time, we've been able to leverage uh, slightly over uh, 1.7 million US dollars from various partners who have put in uh, their funding through collaboration activities that we are engaging in, and uh, we have been able to. Um, reach uh, over eight, over 800, close to 900,000 beneficiaries across the eight countries. And in terms of seed production, we have uh, managed to reach, uh, to produce or through our partners, private sector partners that we work with, uh, or close to 9,000 metric tons of, of, of certified seed, uh, 
and uh, which is finding its way into the production systems and therefore impacting on production, incomes, nutrition, and, and livelihoods across across the eight countries. So I'm going to focus now a little on a case study uh, which speaks to what we are doing in terms of uh, promoting high iron bean. And in this case study, the focus case study is in Kenya, uh, in one of the counties. Uh, Kenya has devolved governments, one of the counties, and the county is called um, Bomet. And here we are promoting or we are scaling up uh, adoption and use of uh, one of the high iron bean varieties called Nyota. So we are looking at commercializing Nyota in Bomet. So what is what 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 informed this? You know, Kenya has um, malnutrition level at, at at national level is about twenty six percent, but that in Bomet County is thirty six percent. That is really a major concern, not only to the country as well, but particularly the governance, uh, the, the, the the county government leadership. So in collaboration with the county government, we thought it was it was essential therefore to start start speaking about malnutrition and how to address it. And high iron bean becomes a one ingredient, one to one uh, product that can help address this nutrient deficiency. And the Ministry of Agriculture's money to produce the food uh, really uh, encapsulates this reality. So what is the high iron bean nyota variety? What is it about? It is re uh, it's a high quality seed, uh, which we get from seed companies that have already been licensed to produce and distribute. It, might, it is a climate smart technology, matures in six to 70 days, about a month less than uh, the contemporary bean varieties. The yield is relatively high compared to uh, the bean varieties that are there in, in, in the, among with the farmers. I've said it's drought tolerant. It is suitable for uh, uh, acyl areas. There's a high iron content. It's fast cooking for most bean varieties. It is very, it's very good for production of bean flour for purpose of value addition and consumption is very good. It, is, it has very low flour tolerance issues, you know, that some people call gas and acid problems that we have usually when we eat beans. Right, so the specific uh, success story is with regard to um, a cooperative that is in Bobet County, it's called Kaplomboy Road 2. Um, and this cooperative is in South Rift of Kenya. It has about 306 um, farmers, 200 of which are women. And it has been operating for some time. Um, and the young man who will be giving uh, his personal experience will probably talk about that. In terms of what we see happening in the uh, as commercialization pathways, so like I said, we work through the bean corridor arrangement. So we have a production <coughs> hub, we have a distribution hub, and processing hub, and marketing hub. So in this scenario, we have uh, uh, under the production hub, seed that are being produced by Kenya Agricultural Livestock and Research Organization, a seed system that is established through Mumbai Seed Company, which is producing Nyota seed, and Dryland Seed Company, which is also distributing Nyota seed, and Kenya Seed and Cardo Seed Unit, which is producing the seed. Soil fertility issued around there to, to be addressed by Kenya Agricultural Livestock Research Organization, Ministry of Agriculture, agro dealers that support the distribution network for availability of seed and other supportive technologies and good agricultural practices. And a distribution hub, we have uh, an, a, a number of, we're put together in collaboration with um, the cooperative and the county government, several youth-based business support services that will address threshing, with support of um, uh, equipment and, 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 and post-harvest handling activities, uh, production activities, like for example, spraying against pests and diseases, youth enterprises that are, are micro enterprises that support this uh, uh, and, and therefore give job opportunities and income to the youth. In terms of processing, we have a company called Cherubet Food Company that uh, uh, has been linked to farmers in Bomet County, and that will be able to buy grain from Bomet and take it over for purpose of value addition. In terms of marketing, we are working with um, Yash Commodities, which is a private sector seed, uh, grain of taker for local and international market. And uh, for a long time, uh, farmers in the county have been working with the World Food Program to support the grain of taking. And then of course, there'll be other cross-cutting uh, activities that uh, speak to that. The actors I've already named, mentioned them up there, uh, much as that one looks like a linear program, but it's basically an integrated uh, uh, partner arrangement. 
I'll now ask the young man who is a beneficiary of this uh, scaling activities or commercialization activities we are doing in Bomet County. His name is Collins. As he comes on board, I will just mention these uh, uh, key success factors for this commercialization. We have a support, a support county government, organized farmer groups, the, the, co the cooperatives that I've mentioned, which has experience in production and marketing of, of, of seeds. There is an interested uh, number of development organizations that are supporting this process and as a strong uh, private sector partnership that is that's pulling this along that I have, as, as I've already indicated. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Justin, for your presentation, which you have highlighted uh, the number of varieties which you have already released and also the potential uh, technology uh, which has towards uh, moving towards commercialization, which is a Neota HIB, which is very important. And also you shared us what are the success stories and what are the things that we need to consider and so on. We have seen that experience from Kenya.